Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a minute breakdown of the Florida Panthers game three against the Tampa Bay Lightning, where similarly <clears throat> um, the the Panthers were just not able to have the closeout they would like to be able to kind of capture this game. But the difference really in this game, as please can subscribe down below or above in the easiest, which he was going to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. The big thing with this game was if you looked at the second period, um, when <clears throat> Stamkos was able to score, Steven Stamkos' goal was on the 18th shot. Now, the Panthers at that point had the more scoring chances. It was 15-9, to nine, but not, nine high-leverage scoring chances allowed on 18 shots, that's still not good defense. And then, obviously, for Tampa, they were playing a uncharacteristically as well for themselves bad defensive game because they had 15 high scoring chances where on that point I think they only had 20 something shots because the Panthers only finished with 35 shots so I thought the difference in this game truly was Vasilevsky as they first scored on that double what looked like a double deflection and ended up just becoming a single deflection because there was no assist to Stamkos Reinhardt finally broke the curse of the power play for the Panthers, but Reinhardt also, that's the big key. Reinhardt could have had a first period hat trick with his chances after the Maxim Mammon save that Vasilevsky made on the breakaway to keep the game uh, locked, locked up at zero at that point, and then after the great save he made on Reinhardt in front at the end of the first, after he scored that power play goal, he made another great save on Reinhardt, so Reinhardt could have actually had a natural hat trick in the first, and that would have really steered this game in a different direction. And then you had a fortunate play for the Lightning as they have a fortunate pass go to Cernok that was intended for Ross Colton as a Palat and Colton were then able to get the assist as I guess that did end up tipping off a of Colton as he tried to get it. And then Cernok was able to roof that one top shelf. That one, Sergei Bobrovsky, had absolutely no chance of making a save on and the same goes for an absolute wired one-timer in Stamkos' money spot where he was just able to wire that one-timer home, there's no chance that Sergei Bobrovsky saving that. And then Nikita Kucherov and Steven Stamkos were both able to latch on empty netters. Is Florida scratch and clawed in the end? I think this is just becoming what Pirlo Wisdom, one of my uh, fellow colleagues at SteelFlyers.com, took out his YouTube Pirlo Wisdom, has kind of said where I thought the Panthers would be able to show more from the loose to Ryan of the world, the Hornquist of the world that has experience, the Gudises of the world, to be able to play a little bit more in a closeout playoff style. They have not, where their closeout in game one was piss poor. Their closeout in this game was better with terms of scoring chances. In game one, they really didn't have any leverage scoring chances in the third minus maybe one, and then the Lightning just smoked them, where this game, they were at least able to have a few leverage scoring chances, but... Vasilevsky was just too on point. They weren't able to get enough traffic in him. They gave him a different look on that one play on the power play. But obviously he was way on point, and they weren't able to get those dirty but good goals. And also he robbed like five people in this game. Reinhardt three times. Mammon, actually Mammon twice, because Mammon had another chance in front of the net in the second period. So he was just on point today, Andre Vasilevsky. I think he honestly has to get the first start because this game could have really went to the ties of Florida in that first period if the Mammon goals goes in and all three of uh, Reinhardt's were able to go in because all of those were high leverage scoring changes. Those are part of the 15 that Florida had by the point that Stammer was able to slam home that one-timer in the second period at 10:23 into the second. So hats off for the Lightning. They're playing a hell of a series. Uh, in game one, they were able to just have the brilliant closeout in the third period. And then here in in uh, game three, they were able to, again, have a very good closeout in the third period and play better as a defensive bunch. Because for the Lightning, it was bad defensive. They had 15 high level scoring changes with 20-something shots to the Panthers again in the second period. So that's not good. But they did close it up and tighten up in the third. And then they were able to really be able to push the offense because that's obviously defense helps to lead to offense and when that became the case the Panthers were kind of just chalked when Vasilevsky's that good and Tampa was able to kind of find their ropes there where Florida was not able to get to them in the time frame that they could have won that game it was almost like a hot starting pitcher in baseball you got to get to them early enough that you can beat the juggernaut where they weren't able to do that with Vasilevsky and that did him in he got the first star I would say the second star um, I'm going to have to throw it to just because of how great of a playoffs he's having, and he started off the scoring in this game. 
to Corey Perry, um, and then <clears throat> when it comes to the third star, I think we would throw that one to Eric Cernok, since Eric Cernok technically got the winning goal, because that was the second goal. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Have a good day. Please continue to subscribe down below, up above on the EGDs widget to keep the goal growing to 250 or more by the start of June.